Hello, it's Mr. O'Mara here, and handsome, good-looking, hard-working, honest-to-God student should actually listen to this um this video and what I'm saying, and it will really help you. Not that you need help, because you're terrific students anyway. However, if you're a lying, low-down, lazy, good-for-nothing student, then this couldn't help you. Nothing could help you. Of course, the topic which I'm ham-fistedly introducing is um, emotive language, which is part of a um, language analysis and it's part of a good many articles. It's a very few persuasive articles that don't um, throw in some emotive language to manipulate the reader into agreeing with the writer. The first type of emotive language is positive. The point of this is that when we describe somebody in positive terms, then the reader will want to be associated with that person and they will believe in what that person believes or does. I'll give you an example of this. In this sentence, this is obviously in favour of the bridge because we are heaping praise on people who are associated with the bridge. So hardworking, honest locals. You've got three good things there. People who will benefit from the bridge, the bridge must be good. Another one, our loyal and dedicated mayor works tirelessly to help everyone in our town. So there you go, he's loyal, he's dedicated, he works tirelessly, he just never stops and he helps people in our town. So we're just heaping praise on him because we want the um, we want the reader to agree with his position, which is to build the bridge. The other type is, of course, negative. Now, the reason we put use negative emotive language is to put somebody at a distance so that we look at them and think, they're so bad, I could never agree with whatever it is that they represent. So here's another headline. Corrupt politicians scheme to build useless bridge to nowhere. So they're corrupt. You know, they're on the take. They're politicians rather than leaders, and politicians does have a kind of negative ring to it in this day and age. They scheme. If it was good, they'd be planning, but they're scheming, and we all know schemes are sneaky. And they build a useless bridge, and what's more, a useless bridge to nowhere. So it's obvious that we're trying to get somebody, you read this and you think, man, that just makes me so angry with those people. Of course I don't support the bridge. Another example of this, lazy li I'm sorry, lying lazy leaders waste our valuable cash on broken bridge. So again, our leaders are lazy and lying and they're wasting our valuable cash. So that's not funds, it's cash, it's very emotive. Um, so they're wasting it. Now, those are your positive and negative um, emotive language. I'll throw in alliteration as a kind of a bonus in this little episode. Alliteration is where you have sequential words or nearby words starting with the same sound. It's not always the same letter, but it often is. For example, lazy, lying lazy leaders and broken bridge. The reason we do this is because it sticks in people's minds. This is why um, superheroes often have their real name in comics and stuff, you know, Peter Parker and Clark Kent and so forth. They're good, memorable names when they alliterate. So if we want people to remember, if people remember the little phrases out of our article, particularly if they're emotional, then they're more likely to be persuaded by what it is that we're saying. Anyhow, that's the end of this episode, and I'll be back soon with another.